Hey everybody, I've been getting a lot of requests for string making video, so tonight we're going to make a simple bowstring. Now there's a lot of materials available for making bowstrings. Uh, one of the old standbys for traditional archery has always been B50 Dacron. I suggest this for any wooden or uh, wooden fiberglass recurve or longbow. You know, it's always you know, the safest bet to go with. But if you don't have Dacron or you can't easily get it or you don't want to pay the price for it, or it's not that expensive. There, there's an option that I like using for youth bows and for PVC bows. If you go down to Home Depot, you can find this stuff. It's polypropylene and it comes, it, it's fairly inexpensive. Uh, this one is actually, I think, rated somewhere between four to five hundred pounds of breaking strength. And the thing about polypropylene is that compared to polyester, which is essentially Dacron, it's about, it's a little more than half as strong. And one of the downsides to it is that it's more susceptible to UV damage. So. You know, with this string, it, it will degrade a little faster, so that's kind of the trade-off. When you're looking for polypropylene, you want to try and find anything other than white, because the white is the worst. It'll just degrade a lot faster. So, you know, this stuff is good. You'll find it in different thicknesses and different sizes. You know, this is the one I like to use for bow strings, because for bows up to about 50 pounds, you only need two strands. So, today I'm going to show you how to do a simple two strand counter twisted string. So, with, with the polypropylene, if you're going to use one that has, that's thinner than this, to figure out what would make a good bowstring, just take a bunch of strands as a test and roll them together. And if they roll together at, at uh, a, around one eighth of an inch, then that's a good thickness to go with. So let's get started. So the first thing you need to know is you need to know the knock-to-knock uh, -to -knock length of your bow. So basically what you want to do is measure from the bottom of your string knot across the belly of the bow, you know, bypassing your riser and then to the other bottom of to the bottom of the other knot. So this measurement is going to give you a good idea of how long your string is going to be. So let's say we're making a string for a PVC pipe bow that's knock to knock, say, 46 inches. So what you want to do is you want to measure out one length of polypropylene so, if our bow is 46 inches, what we want to do is we want to go down 4 inches, so you measure out 42 inches. Next, we want to measure out enough for our string loops. Now, if you want to actually pass your string loops over your bow, so if you unbrace your bow and you want the uh, loop to actually go over your bow, you need a minimum of about three and a half inches of string loop for three quarter pipe. You need about four inches for a one inch pipe. So that's approximate. You may need more or less. You know, it depends on how tightly you twist your string and how much give how large your loops end up becoming. So what you want to do is Three inches is good for most most bows. So I'm gonna measure out four, just because this is for a PVC pipe bow. So measure out four inches for one string loop. You wanna measure out another four for the other string loop. And then I like giving myself about eight inches for my for my splice. So measure out eight inches and another eight inches. So now what you want to do 
is you want to double that. So. You want to cut that piece out. And then you want to go ahead and just measure out an equal piece. Alright. So now what you're going to need is you're going to need a piece or a block of beeswax. Now I like beeswax because when you wax it into the string, the string gets sticky. It holds it together, makes it a little more waterproof. Uh, if you're going to use any other waxes, make sure that it's got beeswax in it because uh, like paraffin waxes or Conovo waxes tend to make the string more slippery and won't hold together. So your splices and everything are just going to pull out really easily. So what you want to do is you want to take your beeswax. You could heat it up first with a heat gun or over a stove just to get it soft. What I like to do is starting about a foot in, you just want to run the beeswax like this. So you can see already that as I'm going The polypropylene is starting to get a little more limp. So you just want to keep doing this until it's got a nice coat of beeswax on it. So you can actually see the difference between the waxed portion and the unwaxed portion. So you just want to repeat that, and just go in about one foot sections. Once you've got one, do the other. All right, so now that it's nice and waxed, what you want to do is you want to take your two strands together. So you want to measure enough for your string loop and your splice. So. That's eight inches for the splice and four inches for the string loop. So what you want to do is right now you want to figure out which direction do you want your string to twist. Most of the time you want a clockwise twist. Some people like a counterclockwise twist. So for right now we're going to do a clockwise twist. But if you wanted to do a counterclockwise twist on your string, just do everything opposite of what I'm saying right now. So for a clockwise twist on your finished string, what you want to do is you want to take this, you want to take your uh, strands here and you want to twist them counterclockwise. So you want to twist them in this direction. So you want to twist it up until it starts kinking like that. You take the other side and you twist it up till it kinks. And try to keep in mind how many times you've twisted it because you want it to be about equal with your twists. So you can usually get about two. So then what you want to do is you actually want to let them twist together and you want to kind of force them together into that twist. So if you can see, I'm taking this like this and then twisting it together. And you can usually get two twists every time. So you just want to go twist, twist, tighten it, tighten it, twist, twist. So you just want to keep repeating this, you know, just keep twisting the two ends counterclockwise and then twisting them together clockwise. So if it doesn't feel like your strands are sticking together, you can always re-wax. It's better to use too much wax as it'll come out than to not use enough, 
enough wax because it's hard to get it back in once you're done with the string. So, just want to keep going until you reach your four inch mark. Right, so we've got four inches. So what you want to do now is you want to take this bottom part and separate separate out the two strands. Now you want to tighten up that final twist you made, and then you want to take. So you want to make sure that it's not untwisted, that it's got more tension going this way than the other way. You want to kind of stretch it out. Then what you want to do is bring this down, get rid of all of the twists in the string, and now what you want to do is you actually want to twist this clockwise, then you want to twist this piece clockwise, so when you bring them together, they're going to want to twist counterclockwise. Do the same thing with this strand and the end piece here. Twist them clockwise, and then they'll twist together counterclockwise. So what you want to do is, now that you've got these two together, just put a little extra wax. And then you want to repeat what you did to make the string loop. You just want to twist counterclockwise for both ends, and then you want to twist them together like this. So this is this is what's going to hold this loop in place and keep it from unraveling. So eight inches is a little overkill. You could get away with as little as two inches if you had to, but. I like 8 inches for the extra security, and I think having it on the ends makes it look nice. Though, you also need to keep in mind that if you're trying to make a high-performing string, you want to make these ends as light as possible. So you want to have the least amount of material. Okay. So you just want to keep going all the way to the end here. We're almost there, so. Okay. So now that we've gotten to the end, you want to... You just want to keep twisting all the way down till you get into the basic two strands again. So I like to finish this twist up for about an inch. And then we can move on to the next part. Okay, so here we have one. You can stretch it out a little bit. Here we have one finished string loop. So here you go. So one finished string loop. So now what you want to do is you want to pull these apart and you're going to want to put a counterclockwise twist into the whole string. You can put this down on a flat surface, so uh, like a pant leg or something, anything that will allow you to roll it forward as long as you're going counterclockwise, so in this direction. So you can't really see it, but I'm going to take this on my leg. And so you see the twist, and you want to pull that out. And so you've got this part here, so you just want to go and make that counterclockwise twist. And then you want to go to this part, and you can see that it's starting to, the string is actually starting to twist clockwise. So this is something to keep in mind as you keep going. You know, you want to put quite a bit of clock counterclockwise twist into this string because what's going to happen is that when we make our second string loop you're going to need the surplus twist to uh, impart it on your string. So once you've got that you want to do the same thing with the other one. 
So now that we're at the end, what you want to do is you want to get your string here. You want to make sure you're pulling these evenly. Try to pull them even. You don't want to pull one more than the other. Get them evened out and then bring them to the end. So now what you want to do is you want to measure the same thing you measured on the other side. So that's eight inches for the splice and then four inches for the loop. So starting down here, you want to do the same thing you did before. You want to twist counterclockwise and then twist the two strands together clockwise. Like, I'm sorry. You could do the exact same thing I'm doing with Dacron. All you would do is that instead of using two of these strands of polypropylene, what you would want to do is you would want to make two strands or two bundles of however many strands you want. So for you know, youth bows, I'd say maybe 12 to 14, 12 or 14 strands. Uh, heavier bows, like bows over 45 pounds, I like to go about 16 strands of B50 Dacron. So. Alright. Okay, good. So this is four inches. So you're going to go stretch it out. So now we're going to do the same thing that we did to the other side. We separate our string. So now all we can really do is just bring this back because the string is connected in the middle now. We want to bring this back and make kind of a window here. You want to bring this top part down and make your loop. Now what I like to do is what I what I suggested before is you want to twist the string counterclockwise or you want to twist the string clockwise. It's a little harder to do because it's going to want to come apart in bunch on you. But then you take these two strings these two strands together and they'll hold together nicely. So you do the same thing on this side. And then they'll come together. So now what you want to do is you want to do the same thing that you did on the other side. So you just want to twist this up counterclockwise. Twist this other side up counterclockwise. And then give it a clockwise twist. Now you're going to have to kind of push these strands apart because they're going to want to keep twisting back together. So just like you did on the other side, you want to continue twisting down for about an inch. Okay, so now that you've done that, so you have your second string loop done. All right, so now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and separate both strands like this. So if you can see, it's kind of hard to see, but over here you have the string twisting So the string twist is actually going in the wrong direction back here. So what you want to do is you want to take your string up here and you want to actually sort of drag the twist down into the other part of your string. See? So you want to actually do that and what will happen is it will sort of transfer the twist to the other side.
that way your string will want to come together. So it'll take a little bit of tweaking and you want to just kind of move it around until the string twists together evenly. So here we go. So here's your finished bowstring. Now what you want to do is you can't really see the whole thing but you can put your thumb in one loop and your other thumb in the other and then just sort of pull it apart just to get some of that initial stretch out of it. Alright, so now that your string is done, there's a couple things you can do. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get a lot of the extra stretch that's just going to be in here out. So what you want to do is you can either take this and hang it on a nail and then put maybe a 50 pound weight on the other side. Another thing you could do is what I usually do for PVC bows is I just grab the bow that I made the string for, string it up, and then I just let it sit overnight. And usually that's enough to get all the stretch out of the string. So once you've done that, you can put it on your bow and you want to serve the string to give it a long lasting center area that's not going to just fray every time you fire an arrow. And then you're going to want to establish a knocking point. So I've already got a video up. I've got another video up on how to serve a string. So in a little bit, I'll show you guys how to wrap your own knocking point. So stay tuned for that. And enjoy your new bowstring. Thanks for watching.